Hello everyone, my name is Bo Eun Woo and I'm from North Sydney Boys High School. So today I just did the math extension to paper. Overall, the difficulty of the paper was all right, but there were some pretty tricky ones that made you think in new or creative ways. So today I'll be going through question 16C, which is the hardest last question from the paper. So question 16C asks you to find where two projectiles will collide. So here we have the ground, and we have some distance d. So the first projectile moves up with an initial speed, v0. And the second projectile is directly on top in the air going down, also with initial speed v0, but this time going down. So we can already see that just reading the question, this is a projectile motion question, and it'll be asking us to do a lot of integrations or algebra. So what made this question pretty challenging was the fact that we also had air resistance, which meant that both projectiles are being dragged by the air in different ways. And that really complicates the calculations we have to do, which we'll see later. So first of all, I want to define up to be the positive direction. And um, just looking at the question, we want to find when they collide. Collision means that their position is the same. So we want the x to time relationship. And in this case, at the start, we only have a relationship in terms of acceleration and velocity, uh, which the question gives to us. So for particle A, we have acceleration equals negative kv minus g. So the question didn't actually give us this equation, but they gave us something similar to it. So in this case, we have velocity being negative for the first particle, but we also have a negative k. So overall, the resistance force goes up, which is positive. And the k, and the g, which is gravity, goes down, so it's negative. So in this case, it's really easy to get the signs confused, so be careful here. And we want to see what we can do with this equation. Well, we have acceleration in terms of velocity, so we want to get to displacement in terms of time. So the path we can take is acceleration in terms of velocity. From there, we can go into velocity in terms of time. And from there, we can go into displacement in terms of time. So this is the overall flow we'll be taking. So how do we go from A into uh, VT? Well, we have the handy equation, uh, dV on VT equals negative kV minus g. So now it's an integral, which we can compute. So integrate dv on kv plus g equals negative integral dt. And here we sub in the boundary values, so v and t. And initially, when t is 0, we have the first particle is going down. So we want to sub in negative v0. Once again, the sign here is very important because instead of subbing positive v0, which would go up, we want to do negative. So just be careful about the sign here. And now it's a pretty standard integral. This is the integral of a logarithmic function. So we can see that it's going to be 1 on k, ln kv plus g. And we have the bounds again, negative v0 to v. And here we have negative t. So uh, I'm just going to keep doing the algebra here. Uh, 1 on k, ln kv plus g, negative kv0 plus g equals negative t. So as you can see, the algebra is already expanding. It's really important not to get lost in the algebra and forget what our overall flow is. So here. We have a lot of variables, but we know what we want is v and t. So all we really care about is isolating v as a function of t. That's why the next step I will do is kv plus g equals g minus kv0 e to the negative kt. So we're almost there. We almost have v isolated. So v equals g minus kv0 on k e to the negative kt minus g on k. 
So as we keep going, we have v as a function of t. So now we want x as a function of t. Here, we again use the equation v equals dx on dt. So we have integrate dx equals g minus k v0 or k e to the negative kt minus g on k dt. So x and t. Subbing in the bounds again. So for the first particle, particle A, uh, we initially have it in the air. So we want the bound to be d in the air when time is zero. So now we can do the integral. x equals d plus g minus kv0 on k squared, 1 minus e to the negative kt minus gt on k. And that's the displacement equation for the first particle. We'll be doing something very similar for the second particle. So for particle B, which starts on the ground, we have the exact same equation. We have A equals negative kV minus G. So once again, we have dV on dt equals negative kV minus G and integrate dv on kv plus g equals negative integrate 0 to t dt and v and so for this one we're going up initially which means the initial velocity is v0 it's really easy to just start doing the integral here but one thing we might realize is that this integral is pretty much exactly the same as this integral the only thing that changes is we have negative v0, and we're changing it into a v0. That means we don't actually have to do the integral all over again. All we need to do is change the sign of the v0. This is a very big time-saving step that you can do in this question. And as a general tip, whenever you have an integral, before going straight into trying to do it, you should always try to look for relationships to other integrals, perhaps ones you've already done, and those can be a big time-saving step. So here, I will label this as star. And we can see that from star, uh, we only change, change negative v0 into v0. That means that all these computations we did are also the same. And the only difference is that we're changing the negative v0 into a v0. So we can directly write the line v equals g plus kv0 on k e to the negative kt and minus g on k. Unfortunately, our time-saving step doesn't work as well for the next integral because it's not exactly the same. So dx equals integrate g plus kv0 on k kt minus g on k dt. And again, the bounds are zero when time is zero because it's on the ground. And we have t, uh, we have x, and we have x and t. So in this case, the displacement is going to be x equals g plus kv0 on k squared, 1 minus e to the negative kt, and minus gt on k. So now we've done our integrals. We want to go back to what the question is. We want to calculate when the two particles collide. So we have the position of b, and we have the position of particle a. So all we really need to do is equate the two positions, because that's when they collide. So xa equals xb. And we have d plus g minus kv0 on k squared, 1 minus e to the negative kt minus gt on k equals g plus kv0 on k squared to the negative kt minus gt minus k. So fortunately for us, a lot of things actually cancel out here. So we have this cancelling with this. and um, I want to move everything on the right over to the left 
So I can solve for the time when the two particles collide. So I have dk squared plus g minus kv0 minus g minus kv0. So that's a lot of steps here, but all I'm doing is moving the right to the left. So one minus e to the negative kt. And all of that equals zero. So once again, we see things canceling out. So that's a very good sign for us. When complicated algebra starts canceling out at the end, you know you probably did something right. And that's an internal like, verification tick you can do. So we're almost there, actually. So dk squared minus 2kv0 is e to the negative kt equals 0. So we have a bit more canceling going on. And we have dk on 2v0 equals 1 minus e to the negative kt. That means e to the negative kt equals 1 minus dk on 2v0. And the last step is t equals negative 1 on k, ln 1 minus dk on 2v0. And that's the time when the two particles collide. So just looking at the question overall, we have a lot of complicated algebraic steps that we have to go through. As you can see, I've written out two whole boards here. But then the most important thing to do when you do the algebra is don't get lost in the algebra. You have to think about what you're trying to get to. So in this case, we begin with acceleration as a function of velocity. And then even though we're doing a lot of hard manipulations here, all we're doing is acceleration velocity into velocity time into displacement time. So when you do questions, don't get lost in the algebra and think about the big picture and how your logic flows from one step to the next. If you have some extra time at the end and you want to check the answer, here's one thing you can check. So the question actually gave us the restriction d is less than 2v0 on k. So we have here a logarithmic function, which means the inside must actually be positive for the thing to compute out. So if you have time, you can check that this actually works. So as we have here, 1 minus dk on 2v0, 1 minus dk on 2v0. We know this has to be positive, so greater than 0. That means 2v0 minus dk has to be positive, because we're multiplying by a positive thing, which is 2v0, so the sign of the inequality doesn't change here. And um, what we have to do is 2v0 is greater than dk. Therefore, d is less than 2v0 on k. So when we get to this step, we can see that d is less than 2v0 on k actually matches the restriction the question gave us. So that confirms to us that whatever we have inside the logarithm is probably the right thing. And that's a big tip from me. So thank you. My name's Chris Berry. I'm a maths teacher here at uh, North Sydney Boys High School. Our boys have just sat the extension two um, HSC exam this afternoon. Um, overall, I thought it was a reasonably fair exam. Um, early on in the paper, there were lots of questions that were quite accessible to the students, which is good because that means that the students who have prepared, um, they do have that opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge and hopefully get you know, rewarded for the hard work that they've, uh, they've put in. And also that gives them a little bit of extra time if they're moving efficiently to really kind of spend some time and think about those more challenging questions towards the end of the paper. Question 16 is always uh, traditionally the hardest um, part of the exam. Um, this year was no exception. Um, 16A was a question that had elements of a lot of different topics. There was some uh, differentiating trigonometry, um, vectors, um, as well as some, even some coordinate geometry from our junior school could come back into that question. Uh, 16b was uh, worth six marks in total. It was a complex numbers question um, involving a cube root of a complex number. And uh, 16c is the one that um, our student Bowen has done. That was a mechanics question involving resisted motion, um, which was quite challenging because there was just a lot of um, very, very fine details 
that students have to get perfect in every single um, step of working in order to get to the right answer.